welcome back to another episode of the Authors Unite show. Today we have Stephanie Jameson, and Stephanie is a psychic medium, two-time author and coach. Her first book, The Happy Empaths Workbook, has become an Amazon bestseller for spirituality and personal transformation. Her second book, The Happy Empaths Little Book of Affirmations, is an Amazon bestseller for emotional self-help, self-esteem and happiness, and self-help. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you having of me on. Of course. And I, uh, uh, doing what I do, helping authors, um, well, one of the things we do is help them hit bestseller lists. I'm very familiar with oh, all of those that you just okay. said. Okay. So. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Okay. I wasn't aware yeah. of that. Very so, cool. Yeah. It was funny. As I was reading through it, I was just like, oh yeah, I know, I know that category. I know that category. <laughs> so it was perfect. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so let's start out here is, I, I like to start out with this question. So when you were younger, did you see yourself where you are today at all? Is it even close to what you thought you'd be doing? No, except for one category. I've always known that I wanted to help people. Mm -hmm. I'm a singer. So I always thought that my voice would be used in a different way to help people. And the universe has kind of shown me a little bit of a different way that my, my voice is being used now to help people. And so it was really, really interesting. So I always knew I wanted to help people, but the way that I'm helping people, no, 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 no way different okay gotcha so so you still sing or you were a singer I do. I you still, still do still do. sing okay mm -hmm. and then what um so you still sing but what kind of led you down this direction with like writing books and i'm uh, i'm assuming from the books maybe you help people like so no um i went i went through a spiritual awakening Okay, and, gotcha. So um, I've always been incredibly intuitive, you know, but it was always kind of like a, shh, that's just Stephanie's weird dreams growing up. You know, I had dreams that would come true. And, you know, I was telling another podcaster earlier, I, things would happen and my mom would call me and she would be like, your dreams freak me out, girl, you know? And as I grew older and I realized that I had always kind of been this sensitive and then I went through my awakening everything just kind of started making sense. So the books are actually my journals that I was creating during me going through this particular transformation. And so divine intervention occurred. I had a massive awakening that happened in my life and I started writing about it. I started going out online and just kind of talking about it, it created a nice little community. And then I received book offers. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of felt more like it was a part of what was meant for me once I realized that this was something I was supposed to be doing. Got it. Okay. So never saw myself as an, as an author at all, actually. So a little bit different than the average author. All right. Cool. Now I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Me so, too. Mm -hmm. So what was that massive awakening? So I was choosing fear over love a lot in my life. A lot, you know, I was choosing anxiety and worry and doubt. And I was living in alignment with what my head was telling me versus what my heart was saying to me. Like I had this massive pull from the time I was a little girl to help people and especially sensitive people. And, you know, I, I feel very deeply and, and, you know, energetically just very sensitive, but I would suppress it all because, you know, conditioning and, and society's beliefs around what I do and who I am. It wasn't such a big thing in the 80s and the 90s, you know, um, going into the early 2000s when I, when I was in my late teens, early 20s, all of a sudden it became, you know, more acceptable. And then I just kind of went through that transformation. I, I hit this point where I was no longer comfortable and it just got louder and louder. And the more I listened to my heart, the more I honored what it was that I was feeling and I used my emotions and that deep sense of feeling as a gift, all of a sudden I was having these little pings and these aha moments. And I felt like I was being led towards a path that was meant for me. And it just mm -hmm. got louder and louder and louder. And I just, a constant state of surrender, constant state of surrender. So I know, isn't that so interesting in li life's funny. So it's like, if you, um, if you want something like sometimes you just have to let it go right so like surrendering to it so it's like if you like try to be psychic or you like try to be intuitive it like that's not really the way those things work no and that's because love <laughs> yeah. and fear don't live in the same place so you have to think of spirit spirit vibrates in the place of love spirit is 528 hertz higher 
you know? Mm -hmm. So you have to think of yourself as a radio. When you're in love, you can't prove that you're in love. You love that person. That person is your heart. It, it doesn't matter what that person does. You love them unconditionally. That's true love, right? That's freedom. That's mm -hmm. where spirit dwells. So when you fall in love and you kind of go through this transformational process, you're getting aha moments. You're getting what I like to call downloads, pings, and you're in touch with where it is that you're meant to be. When you're in this other space and you're vibrating in a lower frequency, spirit can't get through to you because you're tuned into the wrong station. Mm -hmm. so to speak. You know what I mean? That, that makes it. What book is that from again with the, the, I think what's it called? It's like a yellow cover and it like, it has like a diagram of like all of the, the like levels. Right. So like, um, what's it called? Like Jesus, for example, he was at the highest level. Um, it's yeah. like eight, 800. Yeah. Um, can't remember the name of it, but yeah. maybe it'll come to me at some point during the interview. Yeah, that's, that's something I was just speaking with another um, person about earlier this week. Yeah. Man, if I could meet anybody, it would be JC because he understood his divinity. He mm -hmm. understood that he was one with the divine and the power of the heart. So when he hit that, and that, that consciousness, he was able to do things that all men can do once they're in alignment with that particular frequency. Mm -hmm. so. so how would you say if somebody wanted like to get into that frequency, how would you help them to get into there? I guess so first, the first things first is slow down. Okay. Stop trying to force everything to happen. Go within, ask yourself, you know, if I knew that I was limitless, what would I do? And then be willing to honor that guidance and do the shadow work necessary to get to that point. That's where a lot of people get hung up is, well, if I do follow my heart, if I am true to my heart and I honor what is not seeming logical at all, but I'm so pulled towards that direction. What are people going to think? What are people going to say? Am I going to be able to do this? If, if, are my religious conditionings or what mom and dad program me to be? What, how is that all going to work out? And they hold themselves back, right? But if you go within and you really listen, start journaling, writing down what you're feeling, experiencing. That way you can kind of get it out on paper so it's not all up here. Um, and then start choosing love over fear, you know, hope, excitement, um, joy, freedom, empowerment over worry, anxiety, doubt, resentment, and anger. You start doing that and making that a part of your daily practice and everything shifts. You naturally start vibrating at a higher frequency and the physical world has no other option but to rearrange itself for you. And then that's when the new opportunities come, right? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Now for being psychic or, um, or intuitive or actually, let's actually start there. So okay. being intuitive, how would you um, explain the difference, intuition uh -huh. and psychic? Sure. So same thing. It really is. Same thing. Okay. There's, there's not a single person on this planet that's not psychic. Okay. Um, that was going to be my question. We, we all have sure. this ability and anybody who tells you otherwise run. Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't need to look outside of yourself for the answers ever. The way that your intuition is developed is by trusting it more. Just like when you're working out, you got to build that muscle, right? So the more you choose love over fear and the more you honor in what it is that you're saying, the stronger those intuitive abilities are going to become, right? Mm -hmm. Like I was explaining earlier. Now, psychic mediumship, I don't feel that everyone has that gift. That's a gift all on its own. It's a completely different world. And it's something that I truly feel like you're born with, okay? Mm -hmm. But psychic abilities and intuition, absolutely. Your heart holds the blueprint for what it is that you're supposed to experience. Where we've kind of had a little bit of a hard time is that there's been this separation. I'm either going to follow my head or my heart, but that's not what it's about. It's about allowing the heart to be the master. It sends the instructions to the brain and then the brain goes, oh, I'll make that practically happen. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's how you get the intuitive abilities to grow and to become stronger. Because as you become this master co-creator, you start going, oh my gosh, had I not listened I wouldn't have been able to align with that opportunity. I wouldn't have been able to meet that person. My career wouldn't have gone this way, or I wouldn't have attracted that particular abundant experience into my life. But mm -hmm. I had the courage to follow my heart and trust more in what it was that I was feeling versus what my head was saying to me. So it's about feeling first and then acting. Got it. That makes sense. Yeah. Now for the psychic medium part, let's, let's dive a little deeper into that because I'm right? interested in it. So, right? um, 
I guess a good place to start would be, do you have like a routine or, or ritual? So say if somebody hires you to, I, I guess you'd say do a, um, do a psychic medium on them, however you want to word it. <laughs> like, like if they were to, do you have a routine to like get into that space yeah. to allow it to yeah. occur? Yeah. So I, um, the, the term medium comes from the person who is the medium being able to rise their vibration enough to meet spirit. So spirit descends, the person rises or they rise and there's a medium uh, vibration that's met in the middle. Okay. So yeah, it's my responsibility as a medium to keep my energy as clear as I possibly can, because if I don't do that, then I'm doing my client a disservice when I meet with them. Right. But I will tell you this spirit's been talking to me since I was a kid. I'm, I'm that weirdo that I always make jokes that I get paid to hear voices. <laughs> <laughs> you That's know, awesome. because, but they communicate in so many different ways. You know, when I was a kid, I was born highly clairvoyant. So it began for me in my dream state. I would wake up and I would go, oh, wow, um, grandma, who's been gone now for however long is telling me to look for this. And then I would tell my parents, my parents would go, that was weird. It kind of started for me there. It wasn't until I became more grounded and, and stronger in who it was that I am and that I was able to actually kind of tune in my, my clear buoyance, my clairsentience, my clear cognizance, you know, and, and really get all of them kind of working together, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. We all have them, you know, it starts kind of off as like a little synchronicity. For a lot of people who I work with, I, I draw a lot of people who are naturally highly intuitive to me. They go, oh, I hear messages in music. And I go, that's your team. Keep listening. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was walking by and um, I heard this person say this uh, on the sidewalk and then I tuned into a podcast and they were talking about the same thing and then all of a sudden that's your team that's your clear audience kicking in trust it and when that clear audience is getting stronger and you're like oh man I always get guidance through here all of a sudden you'll start noticing that you're getting impressions or visuals or you start getting these divinely inspired ideas these aha moments these ping and they all kind of start working together or deep feeling I don't know how I can prove it but I can feel it, right? Mm -hmm. That happens to everyone. Totally. And then you just kind of start working together. So all, we have four Claire's and well, we've got five with Claire aliens, that's clear smelling and not a lot of people experience that, but some of the people who I work with do. When you be, kind of begin um, to become a master of one, they all kind of start working together. Okay. And it's just about speed, spirit like speed. It's about trust. The second you doubt, you're in the wrong vibration. Got it. Okay. So tell me if I'm on the right track of understanding this. So right. for me, what I noticed like long walks and runs, I, I do them every morning. And, and the reason I do them is really not for a physicality of, of a look. Um, although it, it keeps me at a decent weight size, <laughs> um, yeah. but more, but more so for mental, like I, I feel. So when I am on walks and runs, I always tell people like, if there's a problem I'm trying to solve, I don't try to solve it. What I do is I just go on a walk and it actually solves itself. That's and I, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. So that's yeah. kind of it. Yeah. So we're, we're electrical beings, right? Science has proven this. We have a biofield that hangs out around us. It can be felt up to eight feet. What you're doing is you're grounding your energy. So just like the electricity in your house needs to be grounded, so do you to prevent mm. burnout, right? So you get all this stuff going on. You've got all these energy, you know, all this energy coming at you, whether it's from people, places, experiences, or your own stuff, that energy has to have somewhere to go. So by doing a physical workout, by doing some sort of grounding exercise, you're grounding the energy and it's going down, 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 out through the bottom of your feet, right? Mm. And you feel more balanced. That's really what is going on there. So you're gonna get more pings. The answers come to you because you're more relaxed. You're calm, you're grounded. Yeah, and it's like not forcing anything, right? So it's, yeah, if you like stay in the office like 20 hours straight and you keep like kind of beating your head into the keyboard. That's fear. So you're choosing yeah. fear over love. That is, so when you go yep. with love, what does love do? Love flows, love doesn't force. Right. So you're just like, I let go of God. I, I'm, I'm just going to go shift my energy. I'm going to go do something completely different. And then boom, you get exactly what you want. You said that earlier. You're no longer repelling the very thing that you're desiring because you're opening yourself up to get what you want. It comes to you. It flows to you versus repelling energetically the thing that you actually want, because then you're an energetic match for it. Right. 
Yeah, yeah. So it's almost I've um I've I'm curious what you think about that. So it's it's funny because sometimes I almost like everything is kind of like a paradox, right? Because um like I I when I was a little bit younger, I thought about this of like giving is receiving in a in a sense, right? And like and like night is day. It, like everything is the opposite of what it is because you can't have the other without the other. So that's kind of obvious, but it's like mm -hmm. um but what's not so obvious is like what we just talked about for a lot of people, because for instance, there's like, oh, if you want to become successful, work hard. Right. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, right. And it's but that's like alignment. Yeah. So but that's the most common thing taught. It's like, oh, you're not where you want to be because you need to work harder. And then that a lot of most, I'd say more than 50 percent, what I, is what I mean when I say that would take that as like, I need to forcefully put more hours in. And yeah. like, I'm not doing enough when in fact, a light walk around the park may suffice. Or just sitting <laughs> two seconds, like really just slowing down for two seconds and like putting your hand on your heart and going, which way? Like tuning in, like a lot of the work that I do with the people who I work with, who I coach, not my readings, but who I coach, I make them check in with that little girl or that little boy inside of them because we can't lie to ourselves, mm -hmm. right? So when you just slow down and go, hey, which way? They're going to be incredibly honest with you and they're going to go, go this way. And then it's mm -hmm. your job to actually listen. Right. Gotcha. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's, you, you might not be able to name names, but I'm just curious. Can you share some stories of some uh, psychic medium sessions that you've had and like what's going on? Oh my gosh. Up? I've worked with like thousands of people. You're putting me on the spot here. Um, okay. <laughs> Well, okay. So for example, I work with a lot of people who, number one, they're, they're going through their own awakening and they're realizing that they're very gifted like myself, but their parents or, or society, they've been very scared to speak their truth. Right. I can honestly say that I understand what it's like to come out. I'm not gay, but I totally understand the amount of pressure that that puts on someone to stand in their authenticity and mm -hmm. speak their truth. So I work with a lot of sensitive souls who do, who understand that, Hey, um, I can talk to people who have passed because death is really just nothing but an illusion. They've just graduated. They're just vibrating at a higher frequency. And so I attract a lot of people who are like, Stephanie, um, everything that you talk about, I'm experiencing and I have no one else to talk to about this. Okay. I also attract a lot of people who are looking for closure and, mm. you know, mom comes through or dad comes through, or for example, I was just working with a client a couple of weeks ago. And unfortunately, um, she had a cousin who was stabbed in a bar accident and he passed away and I got to work with her. And it was incredible because something that she needed to know for an investment that they were working on, that, inter that information came through and she was able to do what she needed to do. Right. Got it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people will come to me as well. And they're like, I can't see them. I can't hear them. I can't this, you know? Um, and I tell them, you know, you're still in the grieving process, which is totally normal. You have to grieve in order to heal from it. But somebody who doesn't have an emotional attachment like myself to those people, I can tune in very, very easily because I'm not down in grief, despair, and sorrow. I'm up here in hope, excitement, and joy. It's all about tuning in, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, and then the, the way I kind of turned into to coaching is I kept having people who I worked with on the awakening path day. After I talk to you, I feel so much better. Can you work with me on a weekly basis or can we work on a monthly basis to keep my mindset right? And I kind of denied it for a while. And then I just had so many people saying it to me that that's when I kind of developed my courses, which I'm now turning into e-courses for everyone because I keep attracting people who are like, your mindset is incredible. How do I do that? And so I started coaching about a year and a half ago. Got it. So you brought up um, the, so the cousin that, that passed, um, mm -hmm. what do you, what do you think happens after you die? So, and you said death is an illusion. An so, illusion. yeah. So tell me more about that. I'm curious about okay. that. So death is an illusion. We know that energy just transforms. It can't be destroyed. Science has proven that quantum physics is proving that the substance of the universe is consciousness. Okay. This place is a big school. We've all been here before and your patterns will show you what your lessons are that you need to learn. My biggest lesson has been speaking my truth and standing in my authenticity. Very, very challenging for a sensitive soul to do. One of my other lessons has been being seen. 
actually allowing myself to come onto a podcast and speak with someone like you has been something that three years ago, I would have never done. Never. Mm. So in order for me to teach people how to choose love over fear, I had to get moved through the lesson myself. So we come here again and again and again until we get it right. It's like that place, the good earth, like that show, the good place on NBC. Have you ever seen it? Uh, I think I, I've seen a commercials for it. They yeah. have to keep coming back until they do it right. And anyone who you feel strongly about. So we have a soul family who we incarnate with. Whoever you feel strongly about, whether it's positively or negatively, they're here to teach you something for your soul's ultimate growth. Right? Mm -hmm. So whatever, if you were to look back on your journey and go, well, she taught me this and he taught me that. And wow, I would have never learned this. And that was a really hard lesson. And I really had to pull myself up. But man, that person taught me self-love. That's what you were meant to learn in this particular incarnation. Mm -hmm. This place so, is really cool. So you keep coming back until you get it right. Once How you get, get it right. right. Then you word. Right. You get what I like to call a karmic reward. You get like, it's like a video game. You're just leveling up consistently. Mm -hmm. So you get this little reward. It's like, oh, I chose to follow my heart. I invested in myself. I followed this particular thing. Damn, I got a book offer. Incredible. Oh. How validating, right? I start writing all my own mantras. Um, I, I'm also a runner. So I started writing nice. all of these affirmations for myself to keep my self-esteem up. I went through a very, very painful divorce and I really had to get myself back up, up there and, and get myself into a place where I was choosing love over fear. So I just had all these little pings coming in and all these little things. Year later, boom, publisher reached out. Would you like to write an affirmation book? What? Okay, yeah, yeah absolutely. I became an, an energetic match for that thing because I chose to do the work because I had to reprogram myself, right? Mm -hmm. So the more I chose love over fear, the more I was rewarded with the with things coming at me from the universe mm -hmm. consistently. Making sense? Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, yeah. it does. Yeah. Um, so then though, do you come, are you gonna come back again still? I'm, I'm sure I will. I don't think that we oh, learned okay. anything until, I mean, I have no idea. I'm hoping gotcha. that everything that I feel, all my patterns, I'm yeah. hoping, I mean, until you become an ascended master, which is a whole nother topic, those are people yeah. who incarnated and they've done everything that they need to do. And then they come back and they help others. Oh, cool. Okay. I know I still have lessons that I'm being moved through even currently. One of my biggest lessons that I'm being moved through right now, one of my patterns is getting over the fear of being seen. Mm -hmm. So I'm pushing myself through that particular lesson. And I'm sure just like everyone, you know, once I get through that lesson, the universe is going to, you, you don't know anything. You don't know anything. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh yeah, that's how it goes. But it's easier. Those lessons are easier when you choose love over fear. And it all starts mm -hmm. with your thoughts. It all starts with your energy. All mm -hmm. of it. So I'm curious too, when um when we were talking about the medium, right? So so you come up and then the spirit kind of comes and you guys meet. Yeah. When 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 you're getting these um download, or I don't know if I'd call this one a download. So when you're doing a reading for somebody. And say if they're like, hey, I have a, my grandma is dead and she, like, I feel like she's trying to tell me something. So they and, usually, it usually doesn't happen like that. Usually okay. um, if somebody wants to come through, which I totally cannot force them to come through. It's not like that at totally, all. Totally. Yeah, yeah. But if somebody wants to come through and somebody's meant to have a mediumship session, the person will usually be hanging out with me for a couple of hours, sometimes a day before it actually happens. And so oh, I, usually wow. know, I usually know if I'm going to speak to somebody about mother healing or if I'm going to speak to somebody about grandma's coming through um, sometimes, and this is really, really weird to experience, um, but sometimes somebody's grandmother will come through and they will impress me with smells like grandma is mentioning this particular recipe or something. And I mention it to the, the granddaughter or the grandson or, you know, whatever the case would be, or the dad or dad is saying something in particular. And so it's very rare, very rare that they come to me and they go, um, I'd like to contact my dad because dad's already coming through. It, the energy is that loud. Got it. So, so that's actually my question. And so when they, when they come through the day before, like, what is that experience like? Like, do you actually hear them kind of like say words in your head or, or yeah. is it? Yeah, so I'm very clear. I'm very clear audience. My two strongest when I was when I was born, I was born with clairvoyance was totally activated. Clair audience was was definitely activated. So 
this is going to sound a little weird, but being a musician, I get a lot of messages through music. So growing up, I would get messages from spirit by recurring sounds in my head. Okay. Mm. So for example, my stepfather's father passed away a couple of years ago. And there was a particular song that the message was so strong that I walked up to my stepdad and I said, Hey, um, this is going to sound a little weird, but I, I keep hearing this and I keep feeling the presence of your dad. And he looked at me and he said, I can't believe you just said that to me because I just whispered those words to my mother last night. I just said those things to my mother. Mm. And the fact that you're bringing up this particular song is incredible. So I didn't know what the message meant at all. This was before I was doing mediumship publicly and, and all of that stuff. But it was so loud that his dad wouldn't leave me alone until I delivered the message. And once I left, I, I delivered the message, dad was gone. Done. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. So, yeah. okay. This leads me to another question then. So okay. th- this is awesome, <laughs> by the way. Okay, um, and just so you know, not that I think you think this, but I don't think any of this is actually strange or anything to me. Okay. This, this is all, well, cause the way I think about it, this is just a little sidestep, but it's like, everything is so strange when you think about it from a whole that like, I mean, this we're, is we're not that this, strange. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're living on a like, planet in the middle of this weird yeah. universe. Yeah. No. And I appreciate yeah. that. I, I don't feel that way at all. Good. Yeah. Cause I, I actually, like I interviewed um, this woman, Amanda, and she had celiac disease and she healed it. She went to India I met with this woman. They did energy work and actually yeah. healed her celiac disease yeah. with energy work. Yeah. So it's yeah. like so there's something in the stomach. There's something in the solar yeah. plexus and the sacral chakra. Yes, the be, chakra. That's what she that said. Needed to be, <laughs> yeah, it needed to be balanced. And so that's that's actually how it kind of you know spirit will do that to me as well. They'll say, um, I'll ask them, how did you pass? Yeah. And it's not the funnest feeling, but in order for me to get the clarity they'll impress me with a feeling. So I'll feel weight on my chest. I'll feel, um, Mm. for example, the gentleman who I read who was killed, um, he literally like put some pressure on my stomach and I was able to pinpoint where the stabbing happened and how he passed. So uh, everything is just energy. And when you can really bring it down to that, everything's possible. Totally. Just energy transformation or transforming all the time. It's just all about transformation. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So for that uh, person that you said, um, I think it was the dad that you said, like he, he wouldn't until you said what you had to say to the to the woman, he wouldn't stop coming through or something like it was, my, it was actually to my stepfather. Oh, stepfather he wouldn't leave me alone. Yes, that's the he point everywhere. Yeah. I would go down into the kitchen and he was in the kitchen with me. I would try to go to bed and he was hanging out. You know, he was just there. Um, The best way I know how to describe it for people who are kind of maybe either just stepping into their gifts or realizing who they are. um, Mm -hmm. You know, when someone's staring at you and you're just like, oh my gosh, and you know, and you look back and sure enough, someone's staring at you. Yeah, that feels what it feels like. Okay. Well, that's kind of wild. (laughs) You're just like, okay. And I don't know. And I say that not to freak people out because. I work with a lot of people who are like, I know when my grandpa's around, I know when my dad's around, I know I can, I can feel them. Spirit will do whatever they can to evoke emotion in you. That's, that's how, you know, they're around. They want you to feel that's how we get the clarity is through feeling. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you've been hearing a certain song or you've been seeing, Oh, they love to use uh, like butterflies and dragonflies and hummingbirds and hawks and weird shit like that. All of a sudden, just out of the middle of nowhere, you're like, why do I keep seeing this? Your job is to receive it and then don't treat it as illogical. Go look it up, go see what the spiritual uh, animal totem meaning is for that particular animal. Mm -hmm. See what the color reference means. See what the song where, you know, really listen to that song until you get the message. Got it. They want to evoke emotion in you. So, so in this case of um, this, your stepdad, um, mm-hmm. did do you have a like a choice in the matter in a sense? Meaning, like until you said what your stepdad wanted you to say, could you have like told your stepdad? Oh, sure, but it would like, have got really loud. And yeah, oh, totally. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Totally. 
But it would have, it would have gotten so loud. I mean, you can always set boundaries and that's something that I teach in, in my intuition development course. You can set boundaries okay. with spirit. You totally can, just like okay. you can another person. But if you are meant to deliver a message, you will straight up have anxiety until you deliver that message because spirit vibrates at such a high frequency that that energy is coming through you. Yeah. Do you want that energy to go away so that you're not vibrating? That's really what it's all about. It's about recognizing the energy that's coming through from spirit. Using you, you deliver the message, the energy goes away. Mm -hmm. So you want, and I, and I want to, I love helping people. For I love sure. helping people realize that a, this place is nothing but a big illusion. It's really what it is. Big school and trusting that a, we're always, we're always provided for. We're always, we're never alone. You know, mm -hmm. um, spirits always around. So I love doing that. And anybody who does the work that I do would love doing that. You know, Got it's never it. a gift, you know, or it's never a curse. It's a gift. Um, sure. Some people will say, you know, I'm an intuitive empath. So I feel a lot of stuff. I have to be very mindful with the type of energy I bring in to my space, the type of people I, I allow myself to speak to. Um, because in the beginning, it was very challenging for me. I could feel everything. You know, people who yeah. identify as, as, as empaths, they really can feel a lot. And it can lead you to a place of depression and anxiety. It can lead you into a place of not knowing, you know, what is yours and what's not yours. The key there is to keep yourself grounded, like we were talking about earlier. And then you'll start to see that your gifts of deep feeling are exactly that. You can do things that maybe the average Joe can't. For sure. So my uh, so my question with that would be, is um, like, is it is the spirit world pretty organized? Because that the reason I asked the question, I definitely see it as a gift. But I uh, mean in a way of if you have so many like coming like towards you to deliver messages oh, could it I'm so be happy you asked that oh no yeah. no 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 they'll come and you'll have to tell them hey not yet they'll be like oh. um, I, I do this thing where i ask them whoever's like she wants to hear from or he wants to hear from the most please come forward first let's get the most important out of the way and then mm. i'll you know they'll come through very loud and sometimes they're demanding i'm not kidding demanding um i'm supposed to talk to her and i'm like wow okay they have no concept of time None, no concept of time. But what I had to start doing was doing like a, almost like a line. Okay, grandma's coming through. Okay, mom's coming through. Okay, sister's coming through. Okay, so and so's coming through. You know, and but it's it's about your own energetic boundaries. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I guess I I do want to talk about this because I'm just curious on your thoughts. <laughs> Never, I, I was like I don't know. It's a whole different it. world. But it, yeah. I mean, the, yeah. the thing is, is one of my biggest. I know I'm here to help people teach or help teach people that heaven's already here. Mm -hmm. it's already I here. Like that. It, it really is. It's just about dialing into a different frequency, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um, I, 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 I've actually said that before when I was younger, I, um, and I, I, I think it just feels that way to me. I mean, you can create heaven here for yourself or That's what you you're supposed to do. Yeah, That's yeah. That's what we're here to do. Mm -hmm. But the only way we can do that is by following our heart. Totally, yeah. It can, because can... the thought of like, you know, let's just say if if you know heavens, let's just say heavens after you, you you die, it's it's like anything I could think of of what heaven would be like. I feel I could actually achieve here in in a sense. Um, now those vibrations or like, I actually interviewed somebody earlier today that had three death experiences mm -hmm. and she spoke on like what it was like to, um, to, to die. And she said it was like the most peaceful thing ever. I mean, obviously she came back, but, um, so, you know, maybe there is something more pleasurable, I don't know out there, but like, I feel like on earth, if you do it right, you, you can create like yes. a pretty heavenly yes. earth. Absolutely. We, we, we create it all. And that's mm -hmm. really what I feel like is earth is nothing but a big school where we come to learn how to manipulate energy. Mm. Oh, that's cool. It, yeah. it, it really is. It really is. We come here and every day we make the choice and it's over love or, or are we choosing love or are we choosing fear? Mm -hmm. And the more we choose love, the more we align with heaven, the more we choose fear, it's hell on earth. 
Yes. So let's talk about current events then. <laughs> so what what's your take on everything going on in this? Are you referring world? to COVID? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So 2021. Um, I booked out three solid months the day Corona like hit the US. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. I watched my inbox just fill. Um, when everyone else wasn't working, Spirit put my ass to work so hard. And I was doing lives and this and that and this. And I was talking to everybody. 2021 was divine intervention. This mm -hmm. place needs to wake up. And mm -hmm. there is a real consciousness battle that's happening here on earth. And it's love versus fear. How many people do you know that were just getting ready to do something incredible right before Rona hit? Oh, so many. Well, 2020, that was like the year. That's what it was supposed year, to be right? for a lot right. of people. Yeah. Year. People were getting closer to following their heart. They were leaving relationships and situations that weren't serving them anymore. Or they weren't, right? Which we'll talk about in a second. They were starting this entrepreneurship stuff. They were writing books. They were doing everything that they were like, I'm choosing what my heart is saying to me over what my head is saying to me. Then divine intervention occurred where people were kind of being given the choice to choose love over fear. And the people who were choosing love over fear were creating their own realities, but then they were tested. Is this really what you want? Or are you going to fall back into old patterns? The people who were choosing fear over love, they were forced to go within literally and not do anything and sit with themselves and look at their choices, their actions, the consequences of their actions. Are they really in alignment with where it is that they're supposed to be? Or are they staying in situations that don't serve them, right? Mm -hmm. So this quarantine that happened, I feel was huge for consciousness shifts. People were like, I'm not gonna live like that anymore. I'm not gonna be with that person anymore. We don't serve one another. I'm not gonna work at that particular place anymore. It doesn't serve me. And then there were all these online businesses that were started based on people's heart choices. And they realized that they could create anything that they desired based on an intention. So now there's all this stuff happening. I know I have, I have freedom. I can work from anywhere in the world because I chose to follow my heart. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's a real consciousness shift that's happening on this planet. And, you know, I don't want to go too dark. There's love-based energy and there's fear-based energy and mm -hmm. what we focus on grows. Right. So if the whole planet is in fear, and they're freaking out because they don't think we're going to have enough toilet paper. Guess what we're recreating for ourselves. We're just affirming lack, right? Mm -hmm. And if the whole world takes just two seconds to reaffirm that there's plenty for everyone, guess what happens? The consciousness shift that happens is we have more than enough for everyone, right? So I feel like it was a huge wake up call, huge wake up call for everyone on this planet to get back in touch with what they felt versus what it was that they were doing. Cause we all live like robots. We've all been living like robots for so long and it's our conditioning and our patterns that make us do it. But so many people were forced to go within literally and do nothing but feel. And when we mm. feel we have clarity and when we have clarity, that's when we can get to work. Right. Yeah. So I really do feel like 2020 was a huge, um, divine intervention for everyone on the planet it, it, was, okay. it was it was perfect it was per i i, I was oh, yeah. sitting laughing with a few of my fellow coaches and friends and we were just like of course this happened and i'm not laughing at the pandemic for sure I yeah. meant the, the energy shift that was occurring you know Definitely. um so i got on and i talked a lot to my followers hey man i understand definitely wash your hands but what i feel like the coronavirus has taught us is one separation is an illusion we're all one we're all connected. And there wasn't any better of a way for spirit to show us that. Right. Yeah. What, what I put out comes back to me. What I do to her comes back to me. What I say to him comes back to me. It's just energy. It mm -hmm. also taught us that thoughts become things. So anyways, that's my take on Rona. <laughs> so, What's your, do you, do you have any um, intuition on where it's headed? Like, like what's 21, 21, 22 look like? Is it, are we going to get rid of this thing soon or what? <laughs> I mean, no, no. I mean, it's no. a virus. It's going to stay around forever. 
Oh yeah, I guess that's how those things work. <laughs> yeah. But but you know, if we stay in fear, um, we're going to destroy our immune systems. So yep. science is already proving that if we're freaking out and anxious and worried all the time, our immune systems are going to go way down. Mm -hmm. Right. But if we're doing what we need to be healthy, balanced, energetic beings, the chances of fighting this thing off are much higher. Definitely. Okay. Right? Got it. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about, um, your book, your first book, the happy empaths workbook. Oh, sure. Um, so, um, cause I, I would consider myself an empath. I feel like I feel, I attract, I attract a lot of them. Yeah. So yeah, no, when, <laughs> when you were I saying that, I tend to attract a lot of men who, um, are very sensitive souls as well. It's, it's very interesting for me. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Well, I think this is one of those times then <laughs> um, because, well, it, it's kind of interesting, right? Let's actually touch on this real quick. So I, I feel like I feel everything around me, but then at the same time, you know, uh, one of my uh, friends, his name's Jay, he, he says that, that, that could also be like anxiety. So it's like, is it that you're feeling everything or is it or is it a blend or like how do you know the, the anxiety difference? comes from you not being grounded okay there's a lot of energy that's coming at you so you have a biofield that surrounds you up to eight feet like i was saying earlier oh yeah, yeah the more you enmesh with people the more you're going to absorb their energy your job as a sensitive soul is to become unfuckwithable right <laughs> yeah you want so that <laughs> shield you want that shield yeah. up right so that yeah. you can talk with someone and not let your sensitivities affect you, mm -hmm. right? I have anxiety. I have anxiety um, and I have to meditate and I have to ground myself every day because I understand that I'm sensitive. And if I don't do that, then my anxiety can take over. Mm -hmm. Human beings in general can feel one another's energy. How many times have you been thinking about a person and they call you five seconds later? Yeah, yeah. That, right? that, they're, oh, directing, yeah. they're directing energy at you and your radar is up, you're in a content enough space to feel it. Your mm -hmm. satellite's up to receive the message, boom, they call. Yeah, that happens a lot with me with texts, actually, with texts. Mm -hmm. I'll just be like thinking, and then like I look down, because I actually, I keep my phone on do not disturb 24 seven, so I'm like always present. It's just okay. one of those things. Mm -hmm. And um, then I'll, but I, you know, you gotta check your phone. So just randomly, I'll check it, I'll be like, I was just thinking of her or him. <laughs> because right. they're sending you energy. There's energy yeah. coming at you. You're receptive. You're in a grounded space. You're picking up on it. Same can come with anxiety. So something that taught me this was relationships that I've been in. Um, when that person was thinking about me and whether they were thinking about me in a sad or good way, I could feel it. I could feel mm -hmm. it because I was kind of lost and thought about that person, or I was feeling anxious all of a sudden. And then that person reached out. Mm -hmm. It's all, it's all just energy and we can all feel it. We're again, we're bioelectrical beings. And the more we become conscious of our, the energetic output that we have and the energy that we're allowing in, it changes everything when we do that. Mm -hmm. Just anyways. I no, no, <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. One of my uh, friends down here in Miami, his name's Ben. He's a um, health health guy. And he says um, what you said about electrical. He says, that's why like grounding, like walking barefoot on the beach or like at the park, because you're like tapping into those electrical. The negative ions from earth. Yeah, they're, yeah, absorbed, yeah, that... they're absorbed into the bottom of your feet because you have foot mm -hmm. chakras. Okay. They're absorbed into the bottom of the feet. And then all the positive ions that you absorb, everybody thinks positive ions are a good thing. Not a good thing. Okay. All the positive ions that you absorb, whether it's from computers, your phone, everybody else's energy, it needs to go somewhere. So there's an energy exchange that happens when you earth. I earth mm -hmm. five to 20 minutes a day. I have to. It's my yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I think everybody should, right? It's, it's with shoes as great as they are. <laughs> you know, well, take them off. Yeah, they keep you disconnected. They keep you yeah. so disconnected. I mean, if you look at ancient civilizations who had wisdom that were like, how did they know that? You know, that was thousands of years ago. Were they running around in tennis shoes? No. No. No Nike then. <laughs> We're so disconnected. We are so disconnected. And we are getting ready to go through this huge transformation as a planet. If mm -hmm. we're all willing to start shifting our habits and shifting our thoughts. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I'm with you. I, I, uh, I agree with you. And I hope, um, I hope the fear gets dialed down a little bit for, uh, yeah, I hope so too. Cause, um, you know, I will tell people, you know, do yourselves a favor and stop watching the news. I was, yeah, I was just going to say that. I was like, maybe a little less CNN, a little and bit even, less. even all of them, maybe, you know, I mean, they, 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 they make money off of it. Yeah. You so know, so, and again, the more you go within and you realize that you have all the answers and that you create your own reality, that takes away the power from big companies like that, which is why so many people are turning to wonderful podcast and doing mm -hmm. their own research, right? 100%. Yeah. So the Happy Empaths Workbook, um, yeah. did you write like, so first, if somebody reads it, what, what would they expect to get out of it? So this is going to bring all of your attention towards how energy exchange works, what type of an impact you are. Um, it brings information on codependency, healing, healing yourself, um, the seven bodies of energy. And we, I have a whole bunch of stuff in there about what we were just talking about with earthing, um, how to keep your energy clear and how to shift your mindset from fear-based thinking to love-based thinking. So mm -hmm. basically my first book, the reason it's a workbook format is because it's my first four journals that I wrote when I was going through my own awakening. Mm -hmm. And then it just kind of got turned into that. So it's full of exercises that I had to do for myself in order to get myself into a more balanced space. So and what, a little thing. what are the different types of empaths? So there's, um, there's physical empaths, there's earth empaths, there's intuitive empaths. There's, there's a, there's a oh, few. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know so, that. Yeah, there's people who have more, you know, um, I, I've been gifted to work with medical intuitives. You know, I'm not a medical intuitive, but there are medical intuitives out there, like you were saying, your friend, where mm -hmm. she was able to go, oh, you've got this going on, right? Let me look oh, at yeah. Williams, the medical medium. He can walk right up to you and go, oh, yeah, there's something going on with your kidney just by feeling what's going on. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Wait, who is that that does that? That's the medical medium, Anthony Williams. Anthony Williams. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to follow he that. He's amazing. He doesn't work. I don't think he works with people anymore because all he does is writes books now, but okay. does seminars and stuff, but, um, earth empaths, these are people who are heavily affected by planetary events. You know, I've worked with several sensitive souls coaching them who they may get really, really sad and they have no reason to be sad. And all of a sudden a hurricane hit or, uh, you know, a natural disaster hits that kills a hundred people or a thousand people. And they'll mm -hmm. come to me and they'll say stuff. I'm feeling this really, really anxious. Boom, boom, boom. I'm having this dream or I'm having this sense of this. And then a hundred miles away from them or a thousand miles away from them or across the world, a massive thing hits. And then all of a sudden their anxiety is gone. Mm -hmm. These are people who are highly in tune with nature, highly in tune with the earth. Got it. There's, there's different levels to empaths. Yeah, yeah, no, I didn't know. I, uh, in all of, um, I guess, conversations or things I've heard, it's just either like you're an empath or you're not. That's what I've. I know. I, you know, honestly, <laughs> I feel like everybody's empathic to a degree. That's I mean, what I was going to say. That's what it seems like. They are. After having they, this conversation. Yeah, yeah, everybody has, everybody feels. Mm -hmm. It's about being grounded enough to, and, and being responsible enough with your energy to, to, to make those kind of shifts and then to become more conscious of, oh, that's not my energy. You know, for example, you get your, you're out, it's a Friday night and you're like, I'm going to go hang with my friends. I'm going to go do this. I'm feeling great. You come back and you're like, man, I'm not feeling so wonderful anymore. How did you feel before you hung out with that group of people? Now you've hung out with that group of people and you're not feeling so wonderful anymore. Are you as a highly sensitive person, as an, as an intuitive empath, are you absorbing their energy and taking it on as yourself or yourself? That's energy transference, mm -hmm. right? You become what you surround yourself with. Totally. Right. Yeah. Oh, that I agree with hundred yeah. percent. Um, so I want to leave the floor to you. This has been an amazing conversation. <laughs> I feel like I could talk to you forever. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, we could. I no lie. I've seriously considered starting to do like three hour podcasts because I thought mm -hmm. an hour was long enough, but then like in conversations like this, I'm like, yo, we could have done three. So like, I don't well, know. Well, I'll have to come back so, on again. Yeah, that's a deal. <laughs> um, so if there's anything else you want to share, feel free, the floor is yours. But then also like, where can people stay in touch with you? Website, book, Instagram, whatever it is. Sure. Yeah. 
So Instagram, I'm at Divine Soul Journey. I'm there a lot. It's like one of my big ones. You know, I know there's a million different social media. It's hard for me to keep up for, with all of them, but I'm over on divinesouljourney.net as well. I'm barely on Facebook, not going to lie. That is not yeah. a platform for me. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, not, <laughs> not at all. Um, but if I could leave anybody with, you know, it's just follow your heart, trust your heart, do the work you're being guided to do. You know, allow yourself the opportunity to unlearn everything that you think you know, because honestly, we don't know anything. And once you get through the lesson that you, you're here to learn, like I was saying to you earlier, the universe will present you with even more opportunities to level up. You just have to trust in the signs, trust in the synchronicities. You know, I don't find it a coincidence at all that you and I are talking today. On some level, we were meant to, whether it was for me to learn from you or you to learn from me. You just have to keep trusting the path that's being presented to you. And every day coming back to a place of, I'm gonna choose love over fear. I'm gonna accept where I am in this moment. And I know that whatever thought I put out today whatever emotion I put out today, the energy that I have, it's what's creating my tomorrow. And if I choose love over fear, I'll align with what's meant for me. You know? Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. Thanks again for coming <laughs> on the show. You're welcome. <laughs>